tides. So it's not just the Gulf waters that are going to be of concern. It's going to be the, the river to, to the side, to the east side of town here, as well as the canals and the homes through there. All of that water getting pushed up. This is just one little spot as you look down here on the street in downtown Naples, just how quickly the water can pool up in various areas. So you can imagine in some of the lower lying areas uh, just how, how horrible the, the, uh, the flooding situation is, is, is going to be. We continue to look here off to our, our, our east to make sure we're uh, well protected here. Everything structurally, from what I can tell, seems to be holding on quite right, but I have never experienced the intensity of, of this kind of hurricane with the winds cutting down visibility the way it has, which obviously makes the situation even that much more disconcerting. But it is incredibly intense here as we approach and get closer to the eye of this storm making uh, and passing over uh, Na Naples here. Uh, but it is quickly going to turn from a, a wind and structural story to this flooding story. Here comes another gust. I'm out. Whoa. Can you see this, Dave? All right, so now we're getting it in full effect up here, Dave. Uh, yes. And it's not, it's not slowing down anymore. So this has to be what... Um, Chad was talking about where it's just it just keeps it just keeps coming just keep coming it just looks like a it just looks like some type of sideways cyclone that's coming down here with these gusts and I'll tell you Ed Lavendera me <laughs> we're not gonna move that easily in a, a storm we're both bigger guys and this could easily knock you off your feet but I'll tell you what it's such an easier task to be here than so many of the people who are with this storm, with their families, with young kids, and they're inside, and they have to be praying to God that this just leaves them untouched and they get past. And that's the biggest concern. You know, for us right now, we're fine. Uh, you know, this is a very dramatic picture, as Chad, Chad said, and, and it's accurate picture, it's true. But your heart has to go out to the families. You're watching this coverage. If you're not in Florida, if you are in Florida, God bless you, and we hope that everybody's okay and you're safe and you have the supplies you need. This will pass. It's going to take longer than usual, but it will pass. But if you're watching this from somewhere else, just imagine, put yourself in the place of these families that are down here, and we'll see what their needs are afterwards. But this... This is something that they're gonna remember for a really long time. And hopefully, hopefully there is a measure, I hope, of gross inaccuracy in terms of what the net effect of this storm uh, will be. I hope that it is more drama than it is impact and that the places that have been touched from the Caribbean now up into Florida and what happens in states north, west, uh, and a little bit east of here, winds up uh, being less than we expect um, but for now that big all right that big part has passed there's been a little bit of an alleviation it's gusting that way now but it's it's not it's not as sustained uh, as it was there was about five minutes there where it just wasn't letting up and the good news is this one big patch of trees that I've been watching here that I was really worried about going in to the apartment building across, it hasn't happened. Now, I know Chad Myers is about to jump in my ear and say, don't don't count your chickens. And I understand, but you, you take good results where you find them in a situation like this. And so far, the integrity of these big trees, these 200-foot these trees, Chad, so far, I've been seeing some separation in them, not the palms. You know what I'm talking about, these other old growth trees. They've been splitting, but they haven't failed yet. They haven't collapsed yet. And if they can make it through this phase, maybe we'll get lucky here. But I have to tell you, Ed Lavender is a pro, as you know, Chad. He's been in a lot of these. I've been in many, but less than he, to be sure, and you, to be sure. But there is something unique about what we're uh, getting hit with right now. Maybe you can put some words and some science to it for us. 
Well, the only word I have, Chris, is eye wall. You are in the northern eye wall. You are going to, within the next 10, 15 minutes, be inside the eye. You may be able to look up and see the sky with not a cloud in it and then be waiting for another hour or hour 20 minutes and get the wind from the other direction. And that's many times where a lot of the damage comes from because the trees have already bent one way and then all of a sudden they have to bend the other way as well. This is as bad as this storm has been truly in America. This is what the people of Sugarland, uh, this is what the people of Kudjo Key, this is what the people of Big Coppet, uh, Big Pine this morning, this is what they felt as this storm went straight over the lower keys. It stayed offshore, it gained a little strength but not much, and then it made landfall at Marco Island about 30 minutes ago, the eye wall doing 130 miles per hour when it hit Marco. And I bet you just had 130. Nothing to boast about, but that storm is still very strong, not losing any intensity really whatsoever. So then it just comes down to duration. Now tell me this, when does the storm surge component kick in and what do we look for there? The storm surge comes in after the center of the eye moves by and the bubble of water moves under the eye itself and pushes onto land. Now this is opposite of what we expect when an eye makes landfall on an east coast. This is a west hey, Griff, coast. So the west coast now has the no water on the north and the water slam storm surge on the south side of the yacht. Water's been pulled out of Tampa Bay, pulled out of Port Charlotte, and all the like up to the north. And in 20 minutes, when the eye goes by you, the eye wall, you're going to get eye, and then you're going to get the other side that Marco Island is already getting. Marco getting the storm surge flooding, and we are seeing that, that flash flood emergency for Marco Island proper. 10 to 15 foot surge on top of places that were completely dry. Honestly, the ocean bottom was exposed four feet or so. The ocean bottom was exposed. You could see this. You could see the sand. You could see the fish. You could see the coral. You could see the sponge. And now, all of a sudden, that's going to be covered up with 10 to 15 feet of water. Chris, I am seeing you. Can you hear me? And can you go? Oh, no, I have you. I was just testing out these uh, hurricane specs that you told me not to waste the money on. You were right. Uh, so, Chad, what do we do when that storm surge comes in? Uh, what's the best way to help? Uh, what is going to be the list of immediate needs uh, for the people there? And, you know, God willing, they can uh, hear us. You know, we're, we're running on battery power here. The hotel's out. All the lights are out in the surrounding area. Uh, in fact, I don't see anything uh, lit up. They had kept the lights on here. I don't see them anymore. For what people happens, who are there and hopefully hunkered down, yeah, go ahead. What happens here on Marco and, and likely other islands, uh, really city islands that are on up the coast, like Punta Gorda, um, that would have an awful lot of homes on canals, and many of those homes are less than three to five feet above the canal on a regular day. Now, all of a sudden, there will be five or ten feet of water on top of their grass, and so therefore in their home. And this surge with the push of the water, the push of the wind, think of this water moving at 60 or 70 miles per hour, being pushed along by winds that are 120 miles per hour. That water will knock things down a lot quicker than the wind will knock things down. Water has so much more force. Now, to answer your first question, what do you do? You get Eddie Lavendera and that crew off the street because that's where the water is going to go. You likely will be fine second, third floor, but get everybody off the street. Chris, go ahead if you can hear me. Chad, can you still hear me? Yes, I can. I can see your pictures very well, Chris. So you can you can just start talking. I can't anytime. hear anymore. All right. Let me go to Ed Lavender and figure out what's going on, Ed, if you can hear me. Pick up the coverage for me. Let me know what you're seeing. We just had a huge gust here, and it blew out my IFB. I don't hear anything. So go ahead and pick it up if you can. No problem, Chris. We uh, we are down on the uh, no problem, Chris. We're down uh, on the street here in downtown uh, Naples. 
uh, and kind of give you the, the continued sense of uh, as this uh, the eye of this hurricane gets closer and closer here uh, to Naples. I've kind of tucked in behind a wall here to protect us uh, from the worst of the wind. It's just too much. There's no visibility. If we can get to look down here on the street, uh, the number of uh, palm trees uh, that are just blowing down the street, and that's obviously uh, a major concern for us because with such little visibility, you just can't stand out here in this. There's no reason to uh, and be able to see uh, that flying at you. That can cause serious pain and damage. So uh, as we stand here a little bit more than an hour, uh, we have endured these kinds of wind, this kind of rain. We're still not quite at the uh, uh, at the eye of the storm here, which we anticipate will be coming much, much closer. Uh, and we will uh, continue to, to, to monitor that. So uh, it is a situation that is clearly deteriorating. And after more than an hour of enduring this, you really start to have to ask yourself, you know, we're in downtown Naples and the situation here in the buildings and the structures that we're surrounded by are strong and from everything that I can tell from our vantage point of course in these types of situations you know we'll be honest with everybody it's 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 limited uh, we do not have the ability right now to venture out into the city by any means uh, and get a sense of how the rest of the structures are withstanding this storm we can tell you what we see here around us uh, there is a, a outdoor concert venue uh, here and has a soft tarp, tarp over it I've been watching that for the last 30 45 minutes I'm actually amazed that that has not come peeling apart here with these winds that we've seen. Um, I thought for sure that that would start unbuckling as, as it is tied down here. But what is just simply stunning is how little visibility. We're down to maybe 100 yards of, of visibility here, which makes this even more treacherous. And as we've approached this and endured this for more than the last hour, uh, it really makes you wonder in the rest of the area, homes that are not as structurally sound, as the areas in the, the the buildings that you see here around me really makes you wonder uh, can the homes can the buildings other buildings around this part of uh, Naples and Southwest Florida Florida can it continue to withstand this kind of intensity uh, for as long as it has and there's still more to come so that's a again. real question and a concern that we have here at this point. all right Ed I'll take it from you right now I was, uh, I was a little overly optimistic in terms of the worst stuff being through. I was hoping that that's what that was before. But she's back. And it is a big blow that's coming through here. And again, as you are seeing down there at ground level. Ooh, Chad, this is the real deal coming through here. But so far, this tree line is holding. And it's so important for these surrounding structures. Um, Chad, in terms of what they can do to things, as you know, we know what happens when these big branches blow off with this kind of energy behind them. We've been seeing it about this way now for about, what, 35 minutes or so. And everywhere around us, it's the same. It's actually, it looks, looks actually worse in areas that are a little bit um, west of us here uh, the trees that were there that I was using is and that went over the island not too long ago you are about four miles from where there is no more rainfall so therefore the inner part of the eye wall four miles away now if we do the math at 12 miles per hour you're still in this or maybe something slightly less than this for another 20 minutes so it's that duration thing you talked about how long are people going to be in this when they're in their homes in the dark? This is a completely different animal in the daylight. When you are in your home and you hear things go bumping and you have no idea because it's dark and you have no power and you don't have air conditioning and you don't really have any communication with any of the outside world because the cell tower has already gone down, that's when it truly is going to be a very difficult night for the people from Anna Marie, Sarasota into Tampa because they are going to live this as well. Maybe a little bit less, maybe 115, Chris, because I think you just had 130. All right, well, whatever it is, it is. But here's what I can tell you, Chad. As you know, we're all pros. Uh, we are in the cover of a hotel. The crew is good. Photojournalist is good. I'm good. Ed and I are built for this. Uh, it's not easy, but I'll tell you what, it's a hell of a lot easier for us than it is for the people that Chad was just talking about. God forbid you're with your family and you're having to live through something like this. Uh, our hearts 
Uh, our thoughts are with those people. It's a big reason that we do this coverage. Uh, we will be here just as we saw with Harvey. There's going to be need. And we know that this community will come together. We saw it before the storm. It sounds trite, but it's true. The worst of Mother Nature brings out the best in human.